Chief Chase to come in, please. Right here, sir. Jason Jett, can raise your right hand, please. You swear or affirm any testimony you present to me today will be the truth for all I do. Thank you. Have a seat. Steve Mayer, story of last name. My name is Mark Chase. Last name C H A S E. During the year of 2021? In 2021, I was the police chief for the city of Claremont Police Department. And are you currently the chief? I am not. What was the duration of your uh, tenure as chief? Uh, I retired as chief in July of this year, and I was first hired as the chief in January of 2017, so I was the chief during those periods. And with regard to your law enforcement experience, have you, um, how long have you been in law enforcement? Uh, I was initially certified as a New Hampshire certified police officer in 1990. I went, um, I was hired by Claremont Police Department in 1990, went to the academy. Um, I've subsequently, since 1990, and when I became chief, I've worked at Lebanon Police Department and Police Department in different durations, holding various different ranks. Mm -hmm. Uh, did you attend the police academy? I did. In 1990, I attended the academy where I was first certified, yes. And with regard to uh, being chief of Claremont, you started uh, when? January of 2017. Okay. And at that time, uh, either prior to that or during your tenure as chief, have you had special legislation about going to that? I have. Through my police career, I've attended various different training uh, seminars and classes between computer-oriented crimes, the 
uh, sexual assault investigations. As I progressed in the ranks, I would attend a different sort of training, management training. Uh, in 2012, I was selected for the, the FBI National Academy, which was specializing uh, training for ex police executives. And I've been to other trainings uh, through the years and seminars, along with keeping my certification during the entire time. And do you receive uh, specialized training specific to uh, running a, a police department? Yes. And you um, received all your credentials? Yes. Um, generally uh, speaking, your duties as chief of the Department of Police Department involve what? Uh, I'm, I'm the executive officer for the police department, so I'm, I run from the, I handle the budget for the Claremont Police Department, uh, as well as the, some of the daily operations of the Claremont Police Department, uh, but the management of, of all aspects, the criminal division, the patrol division, uh, the administration within the agency, but also as a, um, at times acting city manager as well, so different management um, jobs within the police agency in the city of Claremont. And is part of your uh, duties as chief uh, overseeing officers? Yes. Uh, and do you file with your agent to directly oversee all of them? We're, we're paramilitary so rank structures in the police department, uh, but ultimately I'm responsible for all the police department, police officers and civilian employees for the city of Claremont Police Department um, through the whole agency. And that would include discipline and yes. uh, training on all that? Yes, that's so. correct. Uh, and do you oversee the dispatcher? I do. And in uh, April of 2021, approximately how many officers did you have? In 2021, we had some some personnel uh, shortages at times. Uh, I don't know the exact number in April of 2021, but through the summer of 2021, we were down uh, four or five, seven officers at different times. Our full complement of patrol officers from my position all the way to the, the first hire or the least senior officer is 25 officers. In April, I'm, I'm guessing we were probably at 20, 18, somewhere between 18 and 21, uh, depending on when people left. We had a couple of officers that were deployed for the in, for the military, so they were gone. Uh, so we, that's a rough, I, I can't give you exact numbers for April, when, how many exact officers were there. And was one of those officers Joshua Williams? Yes. Was he an officer also in 2021? Yes, he was. And do you know he's still currently an officer? He's no longer with the City of Claremont Police Department. He works for the uh, Salt Lake County Sheriff's Office. And at that time, your officers were in bargaining? Yeah? Yes. Okay. And did you have a policy regarding that? Yes, we did. With regard to the dispatch, if you know about how many... Uh, at this point, can I just interject? I want to just be clear that this is um, evidence that we were put notice of the state's court notice. Correct. Which is full of all the video that was uh, filmed on the day on April 4th. Yes. And you oversee the dispatchers, correct? Yes, I do. Okay. And with regard to uh, response lines to Claremont, do you know how many response lines the dispatchers are responsible for? My, my recollection is there's five incoming lines. Uh, 911 in New Hampshire has a central dispatch center in runs that when a, a 911 emergency rolls in it, they call that dispatch center but we have regular phone lines for non-emergency uh, administration and um, uh, criminal division anonymous tip line so we we have a probably about eight to ten phone lines but i believe five of them are, are designated as the normal claremont police department number and when someone calls that number, if someone's on it, it rolls to the next number. So it's one, five or, or six lines to it. And how many do you have using on shift? Um, we have a minimum of one working 24-7, 365. At times, we have a second communication specialist that works at cover shift. So there's two people working with us at times. So during busy times, you might have one. In, in theory, we try to keep it during the busy times, but it's a set schedule, yes. And were you on duty on April 19th, 2021? I, I was working as the police chief in the, on April 19th, 2021. And when you worked as a police chief, did you also do patrol? At, at times I did. That wasn't my primary focus, but if there, if there was a call for it, if we were short of officers or there was something going on, I would 
often, or at times, I shouldn't say often, but at times be working and covering the road, yes. Okay. And do, do you say primarily in the police department, you also leave and come back? My, my primary position is at the police department as the executive officer, but I'm often in and out of the police department doing various different roles, from training officers to meetings to other things that my, my job makes me do, made me do. And do you recall encountering individuals on the in the back part of I do. I do. So on it was on April nineteenth. I was uh, it was later in the afternoon. I don't have the exact time. Uh, I was returning to the Claremont Police Department. I was in a fully marked cruiser, but I wasn't in uniform. Um, I I believe I was doing a, a testing a new officer somewhere, and had just come back. Uh, and uh, when I pulled into the back lot to park in the space. Um, a gentleman that I didn't know at the camera and was asking me if I had my body camera on. And is that individual in the courtroom today? I believe it's a subject right here. You believe it is or you know it was? Well, I, can, I only saw him with his mask and I've seen YouTube and other items, but I, he was, at the time he was wearing a mask and would refuse to identify him. And we've subsequently, had, we as in Claremont Police Department, have had contact with him. And, <coughs> He has a website or a YouTube channel that I've seen. But at that point, I had no idea. He was a total stranger. Are you fairly certain that the individual is sitting there and standing there doing the job? Yes. So the defendant at the time that you encountered him was engaged in what operation? He had a camera of some sort in his hand, and he wanted to know if I was wearing a body camera. I told him I wasn't. I wasn't in uniform. Um, I, I was in a mask and I was, my, my goal was to get in the police department. He said he, once I told him who I, I immediately identified myself, someone that wasn't in uniform getting out of a cruiser, I said I was Chief Chase. Uh, that piqued his interest. He said he wanted to talk to me and I encouraged him to go to the lobby to speak to me. We, we had a, probably a 10, 15 second exchange, just go to the, go to the lobby, I'll talk to you. I, I didn't know what was going on and I had just come back from the PD to the PD, so <clears throat> encourage him to go to the lobby, which he did. Were you uh, familiar with um, uh, the defendant's live stream activities before that date? I, I had some knowledge of the live stream activities. I had some basic knowledge of it. I know there had been some, um, as we refer to them, some constitutional audits or some YouTube or some videos that had gone around the state. So that I was familiar with that, but I was not familiar with this person or what was going on that particular okay. And. At, at this point, have you reviewed the video that was being filmed that day? I saw it. I saw it right after it was. I didn't go to the live stream. Obviously, I spoke with him, but I I saw it at that time, and I have subsequently reviewed it at least twice over the last couple of days. Shifting your, your attention to the, to the screen, and I'm going to just play just the very beginning of this. Yes. Um, you recognize that area? That's the exit or the front lobby area of the city hall and or Claremont Police Department in this courthouse. Okay. Yes, it is. I was over here, across the street, guys, okay? Right there. And I was doing my little thing. And so I was waiting for him to come out so I could approach him and tell him to turn off his vehicle and get on the road because he's been... ...really... Um, idling for over a half hour. That's a sergeant. We get his name. I don't know if you guys want to call, let him know, but it. Be clear, this is part of the video you have. Yes, it is. That is the video. Joshua, wait. Is that is that uh, Joshua Wade's Yes, that is. That's the city attorney. Okay. 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 Okay.
the, P, the, the phone number for the police department and um, in the address of the Claremont Police Department, I believe the fax, uh, I can't remember if the fax number is on there, but yes, the number is there. So he comes out, he walks across the street, I ask him his name and badge number, and then he says, uh, I ask him if he's got his body cam running, and he says he doesn't have it on. Then he says it's in the vehicle. So I look in the vehicle and I don't see it in the vehicle, guys. Make sure you hit that like, guys. We're gonna go talk to the chief right now. <coughs> We're gonna get this straightened out right now. I'm not leaving here until I see Wade put that body cam on and it comes off the second he clocks out of here, guys. And while you were viewing this, did you, uh, did you observe on that video any directive to people who were in the live stream to for any action? Uh, at, at, up to this point, I, I can't say that I had. Um, I have an interaction with him, I know that's on this, prior to what you just showed and then after where he talks to me directly. Is, is, I'm sorry, is that your question? Did you observe any, any directive for people to call the police department, call the uh, I, I, I don't recall everything he just said in that last video, so I, I can't say for sure. Over here, across the street, guys, okay? Right there. And I was doing my little thing. And so I was waiting for him to come out so I could approach him and tell him to shut off his vehicle and get on the road because he's been literally <laughs> um, idling for over a half hour. It's a sergeant. Let me get his name. I don't know if you guys want to call, let him know, but it's Joshua Wade. So he comes out. It, it, it appears he is telling whoever is following his live stream at that point to call and point out those facts that he had located on his video or during his live stream, yes. Okay. He walks across the street. I ask him his name. Now, along the side, along here, is that the live stream responses? That I, I, I'm familiar with YouTube, and in watching this, I know as you continue to watch this, the live stream chat is is logged on the side through okay. Facebook. I mean, I'm sorry, through YouTube. So, so in real time, as the videos are broadcasted, yeah, there's a live stream. According to YouTube, okay. yes. And that appears to match up. What it, it appears to match. There's, I've watched it, and. Um, and it appears he calls out people that are just making comments at the same time he's making the call outs or talking to them. Form of communications. Chief over in Manchester. We've got the chief over at Claymont. Well, then, if he doesn't come out, guys, you know what to do. Same he's, he's, my, my belief is he's directing people that are following him to do something. Yes, you know what to do. Hey, 
Anchor Channel 99. Spooky Press, what's up? I told him I had a bone to pick with him. You heard it anyway, guys. I just went live anyway, right, right when I did that. The circle in red, and I don't know if you can see this, has a comment beside it, so I can read it to you. I, I definitely cannot see that. It is here. posted by a viewer by the name of Kurt Volkwardson, and the comment reads, blow up the phone number. I've seen that comment in watching the viewing of the last few days. Yeah, guys, got 91 people, 67 likes. Go back one screen, hit that like, guys. Get this, um, yeah, I got Harmon here. Yeah, I know, Kurt. I mean, that's next, do you know what I mean? That would be the defendant's acknowledgement of what Kurt has just put up. It would appear so, and, and thanks. Five minutes from when I first saw him down back to when I came up to the lobby. So you I went and got your uniform on? Well, I, I put a police coat on. I, I didn't change my entire outfit, but put a police coat on. And... Okay. Oh, uh, Chris, that's funny. <coughs> if my legs don't equal his chat numbers, he'll end up with a southern accent. <laughs> Hell yeah. What's it say on that blue line? What blue line? Which one? Yeah. How you doing? Yeah. You the chief? Yeah. Mark? Yeah. How you doing? Uh, you have a mask on, but that is you, correct? That is definitely me. Okay. And you are having a conversation <coughs> with the two with the video on this, which is his friend at with, the table. Correct. And the same person I spoke with in the back lot. Okay. Um, so I was just outside, okay? Yep. And this needs to be addressed, like, right now with your Sergeant Wade, okay? It's all on recording, all right. and I've heard several stories about this already happening around town, and it needs to stop. Right. Because I just caught it red-handed, and I'm gonna be filing a complaint. I really hope you take it seriously. Uh, that's what you're doing right now. Uh, yeah, well, I'm gonna file a statement also. Um, but what I'm saying is that he calls me, okay? He's in the course of his duties, he's working right now. Comes out of the PD, and he approaches me without a body cam. Mm -hmm. All right, that's against policy, procedure, and law, yep. okay? Never mind having to tell somebody that they've been recorded. They have to have, actually have it on. You cannot approach the public without having the body camera. Right. I really, you, you, you can't, but it's our policy. We do, we do have a policy. We do wear body camera cameras. Yeah, I know you yeah. do. But it, it's also your policy to put that on and tell the other individual that it's on. Sure. He was in no rush to come outside and tell me, am I, am I filming? Do you understand what I'm saying? It wasn't well, he didn't tell you he was filming because he didn't have his body camera. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that he came out and told me, okay, he was asking me if I was filming um, and recording okay. on the public right. sidewalk. Yeah. And when he came out, I asked him if he had a phone and he said no, he said it's on the phone. So I asked him why he's in the phone. I don't know if you can see that orange C, but I can read the comment to you. Yeah, you I like. definitely still cannot see it. This so. is it from consent of the governed, and it is the number 603-542-9538. What phone number is that? That is the direct line to the communication center of the Claremont Dispatch Center. Thank you. Charging. Look, I don't want to hear excuses, Chief. I really, no, I, I don't know. Seriously, Chief, I don't want to hear excuses. I don't want to hear the bullshit. All right? I hear from way too many offices in Chief, and I'm tired of hearing it. And the public are tired of hearing it, too. And you have over 150 people watching right now. Okay. All right? And, that, and my channel's going a little bit bigger. So I suggest you go tell Wade right now to go put it on his body cam and keep it on and charged for the next 12 hours of the shift. Do you understand? I, I understand what my duties are. What I'm going to do. I'm listening to your complaint. Okay. Now I go take action. I, I hope you do, right? because I'm going to be watching you guys, and I'm going to be making sure that everything is put on your body cams every time you're out there in the public. And if I get any notifications from anybody in the public, I'm going to come out here and I'm going to be filing complaints. Yeah, file and I'll have over 15,000 people file complaints too. And then I'll flood your uh, your, your police department with phone calls. Well, this is what you're telling me about. What do you understand that to mean? I understood it to mean that if, if I didn't take action or, or take this complaint seriously from this person, that, that he would have his followers, like I, I knew it would be a YouTube channel, I believe it to be, and, and he would f have his followers flood uh, flood the communications center, which 
by the way, is overwhelming. Like <coughs> something's flooded, it's usually overwhelmed. And uh, so he's trying to drive a point for me to take that seriously. And I was listening to him at that point. I need to take action. I, I, I don't know if it's the first time, but it's my first time. And it's going to be the last time. So I don't want to see that again out there in the public. Do you understand? I understand what you Thank saying. you. Okay. Do you have a card? I, I do. You're going to have to. I, I got to go back inside again. That's fine. You see, you know, yep. Listen. And I'll send you the clip of the body cam footage of my footage of him not wearing it. I can't give you that information. Okay. Well, it has. I need to see. I'll send you an email. Okay. With the okay. clip of it. Thanks. Thank you. Do you recall receiving a complaint? He he uh, he stayed in the lobby for a little while longer. He wrote some stuff on the uh, on a statement form, which I had. He didn't identify himself. And I received the complaint, and that was my last interaction with him. Okay. After I I do come back out. Speak will give him a card and, and ten seconds long, maybe <coughs> not very long. Have you been aware of other live stream videos that uh, the defendant has made available to the chief regarding Claremont? I have. I, I was aware. I'm, I'm aware that there was other videos in Claremont and all around the state from from his YouTube channel. Um, Sorry. Did you teach on October 27, 2021? Yes, I was. Okay. And on October 27, 2021, um, let me backtrack on this. Generally, with your phone, is there a reciprocal arrangement uh, with other police departments for coverage? Yes. Qu quite often, if we have um, the, the, the easiest example for, for me to explain. There might be an accident on 11 and 103, and people are driving by it. It's probably one of our busiest roads between Claremont and Newport. And um, we'll get a lot of 911 calls when there's an accident. Or we'll get a lot of calls that call in directly to the police department. And when we get a lot of calls, if we don't answer them, they roll to another communication center. Uh, I don't know the exact number. I believe it's five. After, after we don't answer our phone for two or three, uh, I think it's five rings. Then it rolls to another communication center. So it, it so some, somewhere in the magic of the of the phone world, um, it is set up to do that. Just similar to if you call nine five three, even if someone's called that number before you, it rolls to another line. And if it continues, and we no longer can accept the calls for the emergency, someone calling nine five three, it rolls to generally Newport for Claremont, but it works throughout the communication centers. And were you a rollover site for Charlestown? Yes, it's happened at times where uh, Charlestown and Newport will get overwhelmed with calls and it rolls to the Claremont. And generally speaking, with regard to rollover calls, uh, is there a possibility for a dropped call? Uh, it certainly is. It's it's um, it slows down any potential real life real life response because now Claremont might be your answer and call for Newport or Charlestown or vice versa. And now they have to get the information because, and, and they may not be familiar with the community. So it potentially can slow down an emergency response. So it's, it's a way to manage it, but is it the safest way to serve the public? No, no, it's not. So having to, having to take a little call from Shotgun, for instance, that would have caused a potential delayed response time. It, it could, for sure, yes. They're right. They're right. Thank you. Thank you. Major, any questions? Yes. Sir. Chief Gaffin, uh, you might face a major to mention today. Yes. Um, do you agree that Mr. Mason has a First Amendment right to video his interactions with police? Yes. And his observers or viewers have a right to also be a First Amendment to make complaints if they like? If they like, certainly. Certainly. Um, I think we saw on the video that was played, um, some of the, the uh, commenters were putting the phone number up themselves. Correct. Okay. It um, wasn't Mr. Manchin doing it, it was actually his followers. He, he ne yeah, he, his voice is here, but he doesn't. He, uh, in watching this live stream, there I see no 
live comments from Mr. Manchin other than his voice and him showing the business card with the phone number. And would it be fair to say that, at least from the police point of view, um, Mr. Manchin is communicating with somebody antagonistic to police? Well, I've watched a number of videos. I think at times he is. Okay. Yes. Fair to say that probably his viewers are watching these videos because they hold similar beliefs? I can't speak for them, but that would make sense to me, yes. It would. Um, so it may be that his callers would have called, or his, I'm sorry, his viewers would have called regardless of what Mr. Manchin said? Possibly, yeah. No way to prove that one way or the other. Yeah. And, and the comments he made, um, one of them was, you have to, have to do what you have to do. We don't really know what that means. No, it's subjective to whoever he's speaking to. Exactly. It could mean file a written report. Could be. Or an email. It, it could be that statement. Okay. Yeah. And then those viewers may watch the other commenters and see that they're saying, hey, blow up the phones, here's the phone number. And, and the viewers who actually do make a call are responding to the commenters as opposed to just Mr. Manchin. Uh, if you're speaking specifically about those comments on there, yes, but Mr. Manchin does say he's going to flood the phone lines. And did he in this case? Was clear. Yes, he did. Yeah. His exact words were on the video, but he um, didn't actually, when he was telling me, yes. He didn't actually flood the No, he did not. No. It was viewers. Yes. Well, no one flooded the phone lines in this particular case at all. Okay, that's what I'm trying to get to. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I missed it. Never happened. Okay. Um, and, and what he told you was, I can make it happen, essentially. That's how I perceived it, as but he, he can flood the lines. But he didn't do it. He's speaking directly to several of the viewers. I, I don't know how many live stream comments are on there, but uh, in watching that video, that that is a very, I, I think it's close to an hour. I only reviewed the beginning of it. I can't say how long it goes, but the live stream goes and he calls out to certain people in it, but not every one of them. Okay. But, but clearly there are people who have interacted with him before and they uh, be aware that uh, flooding of the uh, police department is called is one of the responses that. Like you thought. Yes. 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 Things that, as Attorney Major pointed out, what defendant says he can make it happen, that indicates a sort of uh, back and forth rapport with the viewers. I didn't understand the question, I'm sorry. We need to move on, Counselor. Uh, Anything else? Um, no. All right, we're all set. We're good to go. Before he leaves, Your Honor, I'd like to. Relevance is the 404B evidence that, that uh, the defendant has posted numerous, and I would say hundreds of videos in which uh, demonstrate that he both sees the, uh, the phone numbers come up, uh, he encourages it, viewer puts up, and he did in this one, blow the phone lines up, he says, yeah, you know, go ahead and do that, um, and that relevance to the lockdown arrest is the fact was already in place when that happened at Charlestown. I still check. In this case, they admit nothing happened with the phones. Um, and in the Charlestown case, they're saying that because of what Mr. Manchin said, something happened with the phones. I think it's two totally different situations. Uh, I agree. It's uh, relatively more admissible than 404B. 404B. <coughs> it's a uh, uh, separate and distinct time period. It's separate and distinct. So the acts are similar. 
Please meet, please merge your right hand. Do you swear or affirm any testimony you present today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but Yes. Thank you. Have a seat. <coughs> State your name and spell it, please. My name is Serena, S I R E N A. Last of Relihan, R E L I H A N. Did you refer to the Shopstown Police Department on October 27th? as a dispatcher for police, fire, and at EMS. And is your employment with the Cape Town Police Department part-time or full-time? It is part-time. And how long have you been with it? About six years. Six years. And you are still with the Cape Town Police Yes, I am. And with regard to your position as um, dispatcher at Charles Town, what uh, are your duties? Everything from any people that walk into my lobby to people that are calling on the phone, whether via non-emergency line or 911. The non-emergency line might also entail emergencies. As with our small town, people don't always think they need to call 911 when it is an emergency. And I have to assist them with their needs, whether it is to get a police officer, fire, and or <coughs> medical help to them. And currently we subcontract our medical help where we have to actually physically make phone calls and don't have access to our radio to tone them. So, with regard to the, the regular calls, you have the 911 line, correct? Yes, we do. And what is the local uh, number to the cell phone system? 603-826-5747. Okay. And, I think you just testified the 826-5747, you will get both emergency and non-emergency Yes, calls. I will. Okay. And, you are, do these also include dispatching officers? Yes, it does. Uh, and you also dispatch fire and ambulance services. You also serve the public as a witness. Yes, I do. Okay. And if you are unable to handle all the phone calls, is there a mechanism in place to yes. take care of that? Um, every department has another department they utilize <coughs> for overflow phone calls should the dispatcher be overwhelmed and unable to answer every call. Ours in particular get transferred up to Claremont. However, there is more of a chance the calls could be dropped. They don't get our 911 CADs for the emergency calls when they do transfer over, and it's increasing dispatch time when it does happen. So we ideally get told to try to answer in a certain amount of range to do so and not have to utilize that system because they have their own time to take care of. When you say the CADs for the 911 calls, it doesn't transfer. What is the CAD? Sorry, the computer automated. I can't think of what's the last dispatch device. Um, it is a screen that, as long as the 911 operator pushes it, it gives us the address, the call party's name, and the phone number, as well as if they're medical EMDing it for medical purposes, it gives us on-the-fly updates of what is changing on that call. That information does not transfer? Correct. Okay. And if your calls rotate up to, uh, say, Claremont, yes. how are you notified to respond to them? Via phone. So they will call back down? They will call and they will ask if we receive similar. As an example, I've had experiences and I have just a plane crash in which our system was overwhelmed with the influx of calls of people that witnessed it and they also took them. And so they assisted me in getting services out, but they still, they don't have access to dispatch my officer. They don't have access to get on my radio frequency to send them. They don't know who's on duty in my town to do so. So it needs to come through me. And if all your phone lines are busy, how do you get that information back? We wouldn't, and I honestly 
have never thought that far. We never thought we would have to think that far that I wouldn't be able to answer full nine, at least here. I would say, this is Claremont, you have this. Um, and we've got to do a on October 27th. Yes. Do you have other law enforcement protections? Yes, I do. Okay, and where is that? I am uh, employed for two and a half years time at the Treasure County Sheriff's Office, in which we dispatch for the entire Treasure County. And you're still currently there? Yes, I am. Uh, and have you had any specialized training with regard to your profession? Most of the dispatcher is trained on the job um, by hands-on experience as it's the best way for us to learn the job. I have particularly attended a course in Concord for learning the SPOTS system, State Police Online Telecommunications, through um, State of New Hampshire, as well as I've been trained as a certified uh, dispatcher for training abilities through an online course provided at Treasure County. And what do you want to do at the Telecom Police Department on 1027? I was. And do you remember what your shift was? I came in at 7 a.m. and stayed until approximately 19.30, so 7.30 p.m. And how many dispatchers are on duty? Just one. Is that typical for uh, yes. the Yes. Yes. And how many lines were you answering on that day? On that day, we have five non-emergency lines that the 5747 number will trickle down to, and we have the 91 line as well. And you were dispatching fire and ambulance on that day? As well as police, yes. Okay. And again, that's typical for every day. Do you remember how many officers were on duty? There was only one on duty that day. And who was that? Chief Patrick Hunter. And we, you were responsible for dispatching officer calls? Yes. Okay. And making contact with the officers as needed? Yes. And was uh, Chief Connors on that? The officer was he and functioning as a chief? He was serving as a working officer that day. Okay. And by working officer, you mean he's on patrol and yes. And during your shift, did you receive any repeat calls from an individual? Yes, I did. Okay. And was it your assessment that the individual was a male or female on this call? It was a male subject. And did the individual identify himself to you? He did not. And what was he requesting? He was asking if the chief was available and if some records that he had were ready or being sent to him and how they were obtain said records. Do you remember how many calls you had? I believe it was three. Is that during the morning period Do you have a uh, yes, that's why I have this is just my call for service. Uh, looks like at ten seventeen, eleven oh three, and eleven fifty two. Did you request his identity? Yes I did. Is that pretty standard? Yes it is. Do you usually have people refuse to provide their identity? On, on occasion, um, we are encouraged to tell them it's just so we have a way to get back to them should the line be disconnected because it does not always prevail. But that's their right not to let Correct. And when you asked for his identity, what did he want? He, I believe on the first call, told me he did not need to identify himself and I advised that I could give him a voicemail or email for chief. On the second call, he advised he was the YouTube person from Wayland. Um, which at least gave me some kind of semblance as working part-time. I don't always know every other case going on, and I honestly did not know what records he was referring to, to be able to ask the chief or if there was a different duty officer what was going on. And did you uh, advise him where he could get his documents? I said I would check with the chief as I know it needs to become in a written request through dispatch or in other means into our department for approval. So I needed at least something to ask him because I didn't know he could not, might not have been the only one requesting records. Claudia, he's from uh, one of those calls, is the one you just referred to. I apologize for the hold, but like I said, I've had a call come in that I'm still working on. Uh, the best I can suggest is you can try back again to see if he's in here, or send him an email again if you're not willing to give me your information to get to him to call you back. No, you can tell him that it's the guy with the camera from where else. Go on the same as where I am. He's playing games that work online, okay, with emails, and I'm not playing that game. I want my records sent via email. It's very okay. good. It's so I can pass, I can pass that along to him, but you're the guy with the camera from Wayland. 
That's the best I can do. I need to handle with the priority call I have right now. Yep, I accept. Okay, well, thank you. You're gonna get long phone calls. I understand that if I'm not on an emergency, this is what's going on. He's not in the PD physically. <laughs> understand from that phone call. I finally obtained who he was, so I could request the chief when he was available from said call on what his records were, and then I did know at the end that he was advised would be receiving a lot of phone calls. Um, and that is your voice on? That is. That is. Uh, Correct. That was the individual. I believe that was the second time I had heard from him. And to be specific, you were present when his call was Yes, I was. During the period of time that you were seeking the sentence, uh, indicate how long it takes him to get his sentence done. I believe that was on the last phone call he had. He asked for all records to be ready for him. And I requested how long it would be in case, to my knowledge, I didn't know which was what was ready for him and what was not. And he believed he indicated about an hour and a half travel time. And when uh, he made these phone calls, was the chief available to talk to him? He was not. He, um, I believe, on the second call was on a motor vehicle stop in which I was ensuring everything was going properly there. On the second, on the other call, I can't recall exactly what I had, but we have a daily log that indicates what was going on which is why I had him on hold, and you don't hear my introduction of initially answering the phone for him. So the chief was not in the police department? No. And following those calls, did you have occasion to come in contact with him, the individual? To my knowledge, it's the voice, everything matched to what was being said, yes. So the individual that arrived at the police department, is that correct? Yes. Was it, did it match the estimate of the an hour and a half? I think it was just slightly over, yes. Okay. Uh, and did you see uh, the individual place pick? Yes, I did. Okay. And is the person who you made contact with in court today? Yes, he is. He's sitting at the table in a plaid shirt. Is that the reflection? Mark, it will reflect the identification. What did you observe uh, about the defendant upon your initial contact? I looked up to our dispatch window that is up to my right, and I saw a person standing there and what looked like a cell phone or video type device in his hand in the window and began speaking with us. And did he make a request at that time? Yes, he did. Okay, what did he request? He asked for his records. The tale of confidence that the voice matched the phone phone? For the best of my knowledge. And the information you were seeking matched? For what I had been hearing on the previous few calls, yes. Uh, so when you made that request for his records, what did you do in response? I still requested to identify myself as in my training. We do not just like to hand over paperwork to individuals without identifying who they are because we do not want someone else's records or information in someone else's hands. So I requested for his information, which he refused. And so I went back to my dispatch console to confirm with the chief I was allowed to hand out separate records as it's also typical practice sometimes to have the officer do so if I don't feel I have the authority to confirm who it is. And to be clear, you make contact with the chief uh, and did he see that with you? Yes, he was, because he was the working unit that day. And what did he advise? He advised as long as that I could open up the record that was sitting there and confirm it. To the best of my knowledge, it looked like the same individual in a picture that was provided with said records. And if I felt comfortable enough, I could hand them to them. To the best of my knowledge, it did match, and I handed the records to the individual. Okay. And was uh, the defendant satisfied with just getting the records? No, he was not. Okay, and did he make any other requests? He asked her to speak to the chief because he wasn't sure what he was being handed due to prior correspondence. Okay. And did you communicate that request with the chief? Yes, I did. And did you communicate any other information to the chief? I did advise that he was with a video camera in hand and recording to my knowledge as I was attained during the beginning part of the conversation with the individual. Yes, he did. While you were waiting for him, did you hear the uh, defendant make any other statements while recording, correct? Yes, he okay. was recording. Um, he did ask at one point my name, 
I had provided my badge number as I was not feeling comfortable at that point to provide further. I also heard him ask his viewers wanting to know what my name was, so that became an ordeal of wanting to figure that out. I then heard him say something that's similar to strike three, and I didn't originally hear the wording, and I had scrolled over and asked, what was, what did he say? He repeated strike three. I requested what that meant, and he's like, don't worry, viewers know. So you didn't provide your name? I did not. Okay. Did you make a direction to camera or whoever, or you, whatever he was doing? Yes, it seemed like he was interacting possibly and with my little knowledge of actually using YouTube. I know there's live chats that can be happening during them. Uh, why did you provide your name? I didn't feel I wanted it advertised on this online forum that I don't know who's on it and just didn't feel adequate. I'm the only person standing in that lobby until my chief was there. Okay. You're the only person in the building. Right? Affirmative. So once the chief returned to the police department, what did you look on his arrival? I saw him enter the lobby in which I believe the subject walked towards the door to meet him face to face with the camera in hand. It didn't sound like a two-way conversation happening and I heard them speaking as I was attempting to keep up with answering phones the best I could so I did not hear much of the conversation at first. But could you see? I could, but I, my focus was on the phones that were now ringing multiple times. From what you could see, was he, is he continuing to record? Yes. Okay. Um, the conversation sound uh, agreeable or argumentative? Argumentative. and they will tell me safe brief information about said event. These were all the same brief information about the subject standing in my lobby and the encounter that was happening, as well as asking what my name was, along with name calling and various items that I wish not to recall. Not calling me by your name? No. Yes, um, he could tell, as in the lobby, you could hear our phone ringing, just enough that you could tell it was more than normal, and he could hear me answering it, as well as the receiver going down. He asked for the door to be open, which is open by a boss by us inside. He poked his head in and asked if the individual was inciting said phone calls, which him and I had the previous conversation about the telephone call you had heard, where it was mentioned, and I advised yes, that it was said, that let him ring, I believe I remember hearing that, as well as he kept asking his viewers, well, I don't know if you want to know her name, you can find out. And I don't know what was going on in that, but so my phone started ringing. That's what you heard the defendant saying while he was in the lobby, before the chief came? Just before. Okay. And then, so the chief was echoing that, and that's where I did tell him, yes, the phones were ringing. Yes, it was not any other matter than these viewers seeming to call in that I could tell. I was trying my best to keep up should have an actual emergency have come out. And did you tell the chief that uh, he was directing people to call? From the best of what I could tell, yes. Okay. It seemed to line up. What did Chief Connors do next? What, sorry? What did Chief Connors do next? Chief Connors, after our conversation, went back to the lobby and informed the subject he would be under arrest. And was the arrest effected at that point? Yes, he was. And during this time, did the phone calls continue? Yes, they did. And for the phone calls that you were able to answer, what was the what was your understanding of what the call was received? Um, prior to the arrest was my name, and not like in the comfort, not like in that he didn't get the records or other such items they get him. After such arrest, it was everything from calling to my tyrant chief to it's an unlawful arrest to you better release him now to very colorful language tied in with it that I had to get to the point of hanging up on people or trying to transfer to voicemails because I could not keep up with the calls in case any other emergency that was happening in my town was going on. Do you need a warrant at this point? 
I would love a right. and then to bring it in. Witness is, is pretty well known for so. We will take care of it. <laughs> so were you able to make phone calls out at this time? Periodically. It was a matter of me hitting a line when it was miraculously up with another call coming in. And if not, I had another person on my line, which happens occasionally if you grab a line going out, but it was more often than not. Do you recall Claremont being able to get a hold of you? I don't recall talking to Claremont. Do you recall, uh, was it every line city? Yes. Was there any, anything else unusual that happened while we decided to send the letter? Once the subject is under arrest, we have to call a bail commissioner for them. And when I was trying to grab a line out of them, I was able to occasionally on our phone system get a call out. But I didn't trust I was going to be able to get the call back from the bail commissioner when he was going to tell me he's coming. So I have a dispatch cell phone and my personal cell phone, and that was my course of action. And I took it upon myself to call the Springfield Vermont PD, Claremont PD, and others to provide those numbers because I didn't want to miss an emergency because that was why I'm there to care of the public. And is that we provided the uh, bail commission? Yes, I did. So your, your personal line? I did, just so we could get bail. I did, I've never personally used our dispatch cell phone because I've never needed to, and I just wanted to make sure there was a way he could get a hold of us. And did any of the defendant's supporters show up at that time? About halfway through the arrest, yes. So when he's arrested, he's removed from the lobby, correct? He was. And where was he taken? He was taken through the internal part of our PD down to our booking room downstairs. Okay. The lobby is empty and did any individual show up at that point? Yes, they did. Okay, and what, uh, did, what was the purpose of that individual? Uh, when I asked what his need was in my, like, call me in the police station, I greeted him like I would anyone else. I don't believe he provided his name. He looked to also have some kind of recording device. I believe it was an iPad. Check this one. Shows that obviously the viewers are watching as far as being one of the pictures of crime. So I saw what looked like to be an iPad device. I don't recall being told he was recording. There's a sign in my lobby that says we are recording. And he stood there and then began asking my name again, as well as <coughs> where he was, what was going on, and then stood there almost antagonizing with some like comments and trying to zoom into my screens of what's going on. Of, confidential information. Did he have a lawyer show up? That gentleman claimed he was a lawyer. That's the only bit of information I could obtain from him. But did he look like his lawyer? He did not. So I know he wasn't a lawyer and he was to him. Nothing was provided further than that. And I let it be as my phones were still ringing. And so you were on duty till 7 o'clock that night? Approximately 7.30 p.m. Do you know about what time the arrest occurred? Uh, I believe it was around 1400 hours, which is 2 p.m. Okay. And for the rest of your shift, were you able to make any calls? What was the phone book? Um, they were coming in as hectic as the beginning, all five lines bringing off the hook, including some trickling over to the 911 only line. I did have an ambulance call come in, which it was a struggle to call Golden Cross. As I mentioned previously, we need to call via phone and not dispatch via radio for them. I did receive, luckily, one phone call from a citizen that was also having an issue, and it became my knowledge as I was leaving of a subject that came into the PD that was been trying to call us all afternoon with no luck of getting through. So for the next five hours through your rest of your shift, the phones continued? They did not stop once. And are you aware uh, of how long the phones actually did continue nonstop? I believe it was approximately three days because I had stopped up to the department to check in on my fellow dispatchers. <coughs> Have you ever, in your experience as a sharp line uh, dispatcher, had the volume of calls coming in? Not for that length of time, no. And do the volume of calls interfere with your ability to perform your official function as a dispatcher? I believe so, yes. Do you believe so or you know so? I, yes, I will correct that. I absolutely know so. I don't wish to know what else could have happened on town that day that maybe someone just gave up on trying to call us. Did you encounter the legal? Is the defendant part of that so uniquely enough, like I said, I dispatched for Cheshire County full time, and I had brief knowledge of his those 
and as well as other people that do similar items online, that a video was posted, I believe, for the town of Fitzwilliam for A.B. Tep, and I remember taking a phone call, I'm not sure if it was directly from him, but it incited to followers that I legitimately asked them, what video are they referring to? And after my shift, I went and looked because I was curious as a dispatcher so I can figure out if I need to be helping these people or what needs to go on, as that is my role. So you have to before? Correct. Same kind of Yes, not nearly as many phone calls. I think it was not a live video or it was posted after, but um, Fitzwilliam also doesn't always bring it into us. They have a PD direct line and we're in a county dispatch center, so it's not like Charlestown is. Thank you. Dr. Hammer, my name is Jason Major. I was going to mention today. Um, just a couple questions for you. Um, so those initial calls that you listened to? That's all called, yes. Um, that was late to 91 a.m. was It was not said, I believe, possibly the first transmission it was, but to my, with my knowledge of that statute, yes. It was a request for information and the right number. Correct. Okay. But she has no idea. Just the best message. I, like I said, I've heard of what they are. That's all. Okay. You understood Mr. Manchin was there to get some records. Correct. 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 I didn't understand the whole process to do so. Besides, it needs to come in a written request to our department. That's as much as I deal with those. Okay. And, and you understand that the department under some obligation to provide records in the public request. I would believe they are. I don't know what they are or not. Are not, not are supposed to or not supposed to provide. Okay. Um, and in the phone call we listened to, Mr. Kanchin made a comment about you don't do X, you get a lot of phone calls. Something along those lines, correct? Yes. Um, and you don't know what that means. That means I could have meant you don't get me the records, I'm going to keep calling. It stated that you're going to get a lot of phone calls, and then again, it was during his live that it said let him ring and the phone call be in half an hour. You don't know exactly what he was talking about when he said that. He said a phone call, and phone calls did occur. So you're putting them together, that's where there's a connection to the That is part of my job as a dispatcher with connecting dots. That is what we do. Same with the strike three comment you made, you guess as to what he meant. I didn't know. I inquired as I did not hear what he said. He said strike three. I asked, what does that mean? He said, viewers know, and I let it be as my phones were ringing and I had to attend to what could have been emergencies. Um, you testified that the calls went on for hours after you've been arrested? I mean, I was on shift for at least five hours and they did not stop once. Right. And by that point, they live streamed down, correct? Correct, but there was a second area live stream after he was released, to my knowledge, and I don't know beyond that. Right, but the hours after he was arrested, going through the process of arresting the book and all of that, right? Yes. So during that time, the live stream's down, correct? But it's still posted online, yes. Is it? I don't know. Yes, it is. That's an assumption you're making? I know with YouTube, when you go and click on it after a video's been live, um, it saves on that you're able to watch it again. Because right, so I was able to go watch it myself after it happened, because I was curious. Immediately after a case, I think. <coughs> I clicked on it, because I had someone tell me it had happened and that he had videoed all around the parking lot. So I had watched bits and pieces of it, but I, again, I couldn't pay attention because I was... So you were watching the video right after it happened or days later? Later on that evening, I believe, once it was, we're fielding the phone calls. Um, his live stream period is down when he stops recording, yes or no? I would believe so. I also don't, he did not have access to touch his cell phone when she placed him under arrest. So I'm not sure what was hit on said cell phone okay. to stop it. But it, it seems like people were calling because they wanted to at that point, right? But guess, you know, she has no idea what people were calling for. This thing. Yeah. Yep. Is there anything else? Thank you. Right, you are free to go and stay healthy. Thank you. Call the chief in, please.
Since uh, January 1st of 2014. And you are still currently in the chief? I am, yes. The police academy, usually 10. The 143rd uh, New, Hampshire, New Hampshire Police Academy. And have you received uh, specialized training beyond what the academy is? I, I have. I've attended a, a three week detectives course uh, back in 07 and service trainings um, for investigations. And have you received training related to uh, running the department? I have, yes. Okay. And you may have to stay up to date on all the training. I do. Uh, and in your law enforcement experience, how long have you been with the Charlestown? Since uh, 2005. And prior to that, I was with the Sullivan County yeah. Department of Corrections from 2000 to 2007, 2005, I was part-time at, uh, at, the, at the police department, I was part-time. And you've been in law enforcement since 2000? Correct. And you've generally worked your duties uh, as chief of the department. So I, I, it's a small department, so I supervise the day-to-day -day operations of the department, <coughs> I manage the budget, um, anything from managing the budget to the facility of the the building to uh, supervising the other officers in their day-to-day -day operations. And you know, um, about uh, on October 27th, how many officers do you have? Um, five full-time police officers, um, including part-timers. We have approximately 14, uh, which I supervise, plus the, the dispatch center. I supervise the dispatch center. Uh, we have four full-time dispatchers and, and approximately seven, uh, six or seven part-time dispatchers as well. And how many, uh, how many dispatchers are uh, on the city officers? One. And that's typical for 24 hours a day? Yes. And how many officers are generally on duty? One. Typical uh, 24 hours a day? Yes. And with regard to the um, dispatchers, they're responsible for influencing response funds, correct? Correct, for police, fire, and EMS, we dispatch for in Charleston. Okay. We also dispatch for ACWA, New Hampshire's police department. Well, your police calls, we don't have a police department. For the phone lines coming in, how many are there? Or where there are enough phone lines? Six. Six lines coming in. Would that include a 911 call? Yes. Okay. Was that part of the the general flow, or did you have a dedicated line? Uh, no, it was part of the general flow at the time. And did you have a um, so part of general flow? So the 911 would be a sort of a rollover call. Um, I'm sorry. Would that be that's in the rollover, correct? The 911. Yes. But if a 911 call comes in, you get the information regarding from 911 dispatch as far as the location and all the information? Yes. Okay. Did you make any changes to the telephone lines after October 23rd? Yes. And what changes did you make? So before before um, October 21 there, we, we had a, uh, a system where we had the six lines. We have one line, you know, the, the, for instance, it's 826-747. And then 4849, etc. And when somebody called in on one line, if that line was being used, it would just kicked to the next line. Um, and then if that was used, it would kick to the, the following line. We actually had our, we had to have our, uh, our phone provider come in and change our configuration to our, our phone line so that uh, one of those lines is now, doesn't, it's not included in that rollover and it's devoted just for 9 that's currently in 
in addition to the lines that you have a reciprocal role in the stuff department? We did so if all of our, our lines were were being used, nine one one would would kick over to the Claremont police department. Would your uh, five seven four seven call call for No, just the nine one one. Just the numbers coming from nine one one. short staff so I typically will cover patrol shifts as well. And you were doing that on that? I was, yes. You were also functioning as a chief? I, I was, yes. Were there any other officers on duty? No. And who was your dispatcher on duty? Serena Bellahan. And in the morning of October 27th, were you on patrol? I was. And did you receive any communication from uh, dispatcher Bellahan about the Department? At the police department, yes. And what was your understanding? What why the individual was there? Um, there was a there was a uh, she said that there was a, a male looking for records that didn't identify himself. Um, I asked her to look inside an envelope and if the picture inside the envelope matched the guy standing in the lobby, just give him what he wanted, and that's it. Were you familiar with? Uh, you believe you were familiar with the individual from a prior contact? Yes. Okay. And once you have relayed that information, did uh, Dispatcher Relohan uh, contact you again about the defendant, about this individual? Yes. Okay. And what did she communicate to you? That the uh, individual is insistent on, on speaking to me in person. Okay. And did she uh, indicate to you that uh, the individual was uh, video? Live streaming. Yes. Were you generally aware of uh, the individual's live stream videos at that time? Not really. Uh, I knew the name, but I wasn't familiar with the, the extent of the line of live stream. Okay. So once uh, Inspector Relahan asked you to come back to the uh, police department, did you return? Yes. And when you entered, Lobby, what? I was met by uh, the defendant, Mark Mansion. Okay. So the, the person that you met you in the lobby is being called tonight? Yes, it's sitting at the defense table. Okay, that's good. What's that? Did you identify the defendant? Identification occurred. Did you believe he was live streaming at that time? Uh, no, not until he told me that he was. Okay. So was he recorded? He was. Okay, so you could see a recording device. He had a cell phone with a like a stick uh, holding it up. And did you later verify that, uh, even though he told you it was live stream, did you later verify that it was actually live stream? Yes. Okay. Uh, and had you encountered the defendant previously? Yes. Okay. And briefly, under what circumstances? Uh, it was a there was an incident where we uh, saw him walking around outside of the of engineering. Uh, just that he's familiar. In your prior encounter with the defendant, was he also video one? Yes. So you were familiar with the chain detective? And after you encountered um, the defendant on uh, that prior encounter face to face, correct? So you can verify what he's saying, correct? Yes. Okay. Do you have any further contact with him? Just over email. And what was the email? He was uh, asking for some records from some, some public records. Okay, from 9184. Correct. So when you, setting this up, when you enter the lobby and the lobby comes in from the parking lot, correct? Correct, yes. Those are two dispatches, correct? Yes. Okay. No open doors to the side? No. 
Um, so, uh, so when you enter the lobby, about how far is it from the door to the, uh, to the window? About 15 feet to 20 feet. And where was the defendant at that point? In the doorway. In, in the doorway that kind of met me as I opened the door, he was right there in the middle of the lobby. Did you back up and, and enter the lobby? Did he back up? Yes. <clears throat> and did you have a conversation with him? I did. And what was the conversation regarding? Well, he had a question as to what was in the envelope that I had waiting for him as far as, uh, I don't think he was happy with what I gave him for his 918 request. Uh, and would you say that the, uh, well, what did you observe about the man? He was, he was aggressive, he was agitated, he was, <coughs> his, his voice was loud, uh, he was confrontational. And did he uh, indicate to you that you were only listening to him? Yes. Did he tell you, did any indication to you about how many people might be on this live stream? He told me that there was about 600 people, the 700 people watching live. And while you were in the lobby talking to the defendant, was there anything else that you observed? I could hear my phones ringing in the police station nonstop. And what was, uh, was it a special incident? There, from what it appeared from outside the window where I was, it looked like she was struggling to keep up with phone calls coming in. And in your experience, is that an unusual approach to have that many phones ringing for? Yes. Okay. And what did you do when you realized there was an issue with the phone? I excused myself from the lobby and I asked, I, I went into dispatch and asked what was going on. And what did you observe when you went in? That all the lines were lit up on the phones. I could see her phone was, was all, the, all the blocks were lit up and I could see her continuing to try to, try to answer the phone. So based on your interaction with what was your understanding as to what was causing the problem? I, I asked her if the guy in the lobby was inciting people to, to call in, and she said yes. So at that point, did you believe, uh, based on your observations and uh, the events occurring at that time that uh, the Senate was committing a crime? I did, yes. And what crime did you believe? Obstructing the report, obstructing government administration. And what uh, did you do at that point? I went back out to the lobby and told him he was under arrest for obstructing government administration. And you believe you had probable cause for that arrest? Yes. And during the uh, arrest, did he continue to make comments on that case? He did, yes. And what kind of comments was he uh, making? He was shouting to, to people not to call saying do not call the Charles South Police Department. And based on your observation experience, do you believe that was a plausible directive or just a I, show? I think it was a, a show. Well, based on what you observed, did you believe that the volume of calls that were being made <coughs> at that time was a result of the defendant's live stream and uh, at that time? Yes. Okay. Did that volume of calls interfere with dispatcher relevance to uh, perform her official function as dispatcher? Yes. Once you had arrested him, Brought him downstairs to our booking room. Okay. And was he uh, eventually processed in bail? Yes. Okay. And during the time that the defendant was in the police station down in the booking room, uh, what did you uh, observe with the phones? The phones continued to ring off the hook, jamming our lines. And did you observe any other individual show up? There was a gentleman that did come to the lobby and 
said that he was Mr. Manchon's attorney. Was he also recording? He was recording as well. Okay. And for the calls that you heard answered, what types of calls did they take? Did they were they legitimate uh seven four seven calls or something else? They were they were not legitimate calls. They were they were followers or they were uh, people from this live stream that continued to call and basically uh, abusive language towards the person you're saying. Website and the channel Press NH Now. And the one of the videos in the um, election video leading up to the arrest, correct? Yes. And you are on that, correct? Yes. And you view that after the arrest, and at some point, while well, you're aware of it, while well, that it was up on that site, not during the live stream, correct? But it's still up on the site. I learned that you could, you could click on a video and watch it after it happened. Even after, so it's not live anymore, but you can watch it afterwards. Can you show you a video which is identified as state's exhibit uh, two, yes, uh, entitled uh, on the web. Uh, the, uh, the site, Tyrant Chief Wiley Public Law, Public Records Law. Yes. Have you watched that video? I have. Okay. Is that the beginning of that video, to your recollection? Yes. Okay. And is that to your recollection and to your, your personal knowledge down on October 27th, 2021? Yes. Okay. Can you identify what that is? That's Main Street in Charlestown. That's Main Street in Charlestown. Where's the police department in relation to that? About an eighth of a mile north. Okay. So looking up the sidewalk. You're looking north from here on the you're on you're on the east side sidewalk of Main Street looking north. Okay. now what's going on smash a like on the way in guys i appreciate it i'm gonna wait for a few more people to get in here and then uh we're gonna get going what up david what up sailor all the way from iceland good to see you appreciate the support from so far what up bonsai party daniel roger larry Charlie, what's up? From the UK. Thank you, James. Appreciate it. What up, Kingsman? 
Kevin Taga, Sean, Andre Montana, good to see you, man. What up, Brian? Good to see you too, man. Ah, nice Cam. Good to see you, man. Ah, let's go, Brandon. What up, Amber? What's going on? Um, I may fix the uh oh, I am Danny. Um, I may uh cut you off for a second, guys, um, as you come again. Smash a like on the way in here. Um, I do. The video is really slow right now. I mean, if you're good enough with it, the way it looks now, hit a one. Uh, if you want me to throw you into Buffville for about 30 seconds and fix it, let me know. Hit a two. So if it's good and it's not moving too slow for you, I can fix the resolution. I just want to make sure before I get this going. I'm getting a lot of ones, so. It may be a little slow, uh, but it's not great service though, so I gotta put the resolution down. Alright, I'm gonna keep it at uh, where it's at right now, we're gonna get to it. Keep smashing that like on the way in, man. I appreciate all your support, guys. Um, we're gonna be going over to this police department to go put, pick up some records. If you look at the uh, thumbnail, you'll understand a little um, and then if you look at the description, all links are included, guys. I'm probably going to need your help here. When the defendant says, have you seen this on the computer, correct? I have, yes. And what are the links that are included underneath that? It's the phone number and contact information for Charles Police Department. Okay. 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 With what I'm doing, um, the police chief is uh, playing hard to get with these records, and uh, it's really pissing me off. He's not sending them to my email. Um, he wants to know who I am, uh, where I'm from, my PO box, or my address, my number. I mean, he wants all the information. He doesn't know who he wants to send this to, or if it's getting to the right person. All the bullshit excuses, guys, that you always hear. Um, so now I had to drive almost two hours away to go and get these records, because um, I'm just stubborn. And uh, I didn't want to wait anymore. I do have the video coming up uh, regarding these records. And uh, police chief over here in Charlestown. I'm in uh, Charlestown, Russia. And I uh, went over to do an audit in the area that you will see tomorrow at 11 o'clock, hopefully. Uh, it's going to be a lot of editing. Uh, I got a long day ahead of me. And I also got to go out tomorrow. I got a few places I want to hit up. So. Everything's in the description, guys. Uh, if you do want to make your the, uh, police chief and or the police department regarding these records, we'll see how it goes. Um, they may even try to charge me for these records, which is total bullshit. I'm not going to deal with that either. What up, Becky? Um, so here we are. We're over here at the Charlestown Police Department. There's one vehicle. I think the chief is actually working. Uh, usually working at six the midnight shift and uh, today he is here um, so you can identify that building yes that's the Charles Police Department okay and is that your vehicle no okay. whose vehicle was that that's Serena Rowan's on calls so they may be even short-staffed it is in town not too far from Claremont those assholes over there don't like to put on their body cams. There's a video on my playlist if you want to go check that out. Talk to the chief in that one, too. So this is, I'm assuming, the chief's car, possibly. We'll take a look inside. Let's go. Military veterans, school boards. But this is a I think I just saw him not too far from here. We'll do a uh, permanent check of the uh, of this department. Yeah. What up, Lewis? So I don't see any fences, gates, or signs. Completely open to the public. If you look at the uh, trespassing statute, you'll uh, you'll see it's pretty defined in there for those uh, three things. What 
Rob. Rob, Rob. Good to see all you guys. Let's get that uh, those lights up before I head in. Hopefully they don't give me too much of a hard time, but I said this chief is making me drive two hours to get these records and uh, refusing to. He said that in the statute for RSA 91-A says nothing in there says that he has to send an email. Um, that is false. If you look at the description, in the description you'll see the link to that um, to that statute for a uh, FOIA request. And it actually does um, state that that you can and that if it's an option. And also guys, it also has to do with um, you know, your privacy, if you don't want to give your information, it also says that in the statute. Go take a look at it. You'll get a better understanding of the uh, of the law for uh, public records. Uh, I try to do as much as I can for you guys. Um, it's pretty interesting. If you need a full records, you'll understand the law a little bit better than these schools over here at the police department. But it doesn't surprise me. He didn't de-escalate the situation over there um, at the uh, place I audited. Let's take a look down here real quick. Thank you, Winston. Good to see you, man. I'm just paying attention to my surroundings as, as of right now. I'm not really looking at comments too much, but I'm going back and forth. So if I didn't say what up, what up? Uh, I have not contacted the city manager. I think there's a town manager, but... I'm just uh, throwing at me everywhere, everywhere I turn. I mean, if he wants my information that bad, then uh, I'm sure you can figure it out. Or maybe he's just too stupid and lazy to make a few calls around the state regarding me. I don't know. So we're going to see what they do, see what they say. He may even be the only one on today. Should you get those records to the good one? Yep, exactly, Kingman. Exactly. You read in my mind. Um, if there's a hard time over here, I'll go to the town manager. So we're going to go inside, guys. Some records. Okay, and your name? I didn't get that. Oh, it's right here. I have a, uh, it, it says right here. Okay. Yeah, I just need my records from the chief that left it here. Okay. That's it. Alright, hold on. Damn, I already got here with the radio. Huh? That was quick. It's gonna be a new record. Yeah, guys, let's get that up to 200 likes. Yeah, when they ask you, can I help you, they don't really mean that. <laughs> it's a fluke. Where is the chief, anyway? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Hiding somewhere in the woods, parking lot. What do you mean? You're recording, aren't you? There you are. This is right here. Security notice. Activities on the premises of being out here on video recording. Yeah, can you, do you mind shutting that off then? I don't have the authority. Okay. You don't have the authority that's on me too. Okay. Striking out, huh? What, uh, what is this entailing? What records? I have no idea. Well, I'd like to spend them because he didn't even contact me about what records I'm picking up. Where's my audio recording? Please do. Have a seat. I'll stand, thank you. <laughs> yeah, strike three, yeah. Huh? Strike three? I'm sorry, my view is on this. What's your name? What's your name? That's not your name. 
That's your ID number. What's your name? You're going to refuse to give me a name? I don't know, guys. Seriously, right, Flux? Yeah, sit in the corner. <laughs> uh, maybe they have a milk crate. Yeah, I might just have to pull her record, too. So. But church. Yes, we're good. Well, I don't know, guys. You want to figure out her name? You could ask if you'd like. Everything's in the description for you. Thank you, Andy. Appreciate it. Where do you take that directed to me? Uh, for the viewers to call in and ask her what her name is. This was part of the investigation. Watching the video? Yes. What's your direct number? It is, isn't it? Yeah. No, they were asking, that's all. They may have some questions for you guys. Guys, if you have any questions, you can, uh, what is it, 401? 400? You can ask uh, just 401 or whatever the hell it is, what her name is. Maybe she'll let you know after the. Part of the investigation, did you take that to be a director to call the police department? 
Hundredth ring, maybe. That's okay. You guys do not have to call. Oh, there it is, Winston. Thank you, buddy. Public has some uh, questions. In. When the defendant says, there it is, Winston. If you look from the fourth one down, it's Winston Fizzeroy. It says the uh, Telltown Police Department, 603-826-5747. Do you believe the defendant was responding to that call? That call. No objection. I, I believe that he was responding to Winston's comments of posting the phone number. Concerns, and I think they want to ask you. Poor girl, it's only hard too. See what her name is. I'm sure, you guys are too. You have They're gonna learn today, guys. Let me tell you. Financing plans to fit your budget. And again, when you heard that comment, and the defendant says, "And you're gonna learn today, guys." Would be changed. They were going to make an immediate response. The objection was sustained. Doesn't really matter. Aspen Dental. Where's my uh, communications? Where's my radio? Where's my audio? Where's all my pitches? Lisa Perry? Is that your name, Lisa? It is not Lisa. So this dispatch is not named Lisa. Oh, look at that. They have all my information, but they wouldn't email this to me. Huh? Violating public records laws, huh? RSA 91A. You guys are going to learn today, aren't you? Making me drive two hours to get these records when you could have emailed them? Incredible, guys. See, they just want to make it difficult. They wanted to come see me again. Yeah, he actually, I wonder if there's any video on his phone. He didn't even respond to my email. All he did was say, literally, where can I send it? I don't know who this is. I take public records requests very seriously. But I'll make you drive two hours away to get them, though. And there's nothing in the RSA 91A that says I have to email them to you. Er, uh, wrong. You're wrong. He's wrong. And your name is also public record. So what is your name? No, you're wrong. Now I'm going to pull your salary, too. I'm going to make that public. Hope you enjoy. I won't leave here until either she leaves or she gives me her name. That's the deal. Where's Chief Connors? I don't see Chief Connors. Is that her vehicle? Subaru?
Yeah, the email he sent me said, uh, I need your name, your address. Come to find out, it's on the report. And it's on the envelope. My full name. They already know who I am. And I never gave it to them, which is fine. But they know all my information. They know where it goes. They're not busy enough here anyway in Charlestown. I was in town for almost 45 minutes and didn't even hear dispatch go off, so. So, you guys, you do not call. Oh, there's Chief Connors. Here he is. Tire Patrol. What's going on, Connors? So, you do know who I am after all, huh? I found out, yeah. Yeah, you found out, but why did you, why did you make me drive here two hours for papers? That's what you wanted. That's I want radio possible. communications. I asked for too. I have that. You have zero radio I communications. Have nothing else for you except for that. You didn't say anything on dispatch regarding that call. I have, calls. Listen, I have nothing else to show you. You know what's funny, Chief Connors? If you want anything else, you call number. Report. Hold on, Chief. You're gonna listen, okay? Call number two one dash five nine six nine. You said you weren't dispatched out there. Second, where is my audio? Read it. I want to read it. You didn't even tell me what I was coming here to get. That's what you asked for. No, I did right, not. I asked for I'm a not, lot. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going no, back and forth. No, no. We are going to go back and forth. You're going to sit here and listen to what I have to say, and a thousand other people are going to tell you exactly what to so, say. So listen to me. No, I'm not going to listen to you, Chief. Okay, so I, asked you for, I asked you for certain records, okay? You responded with, what is your name? Where do I send it to? I take, uh, I take emails very seriously for FOIA requests, which is bullshit. Okay, because you made me drive out here for two two hours to drive out here to get public record that you could email that says it in the statute. Okay, that you can and will email it when I ask. Why did you excuse yourself at that point? I, all I could hear was the phones ringing and my dispatcher trying to keep up with phones. That's you know you testified to earlier. Yes. I did not incite it. I told them do not call. No, I did not. Prove it. Prove it. Prove it. I said do not call. Look at my video. You're live with 600 people watching. 700 people. Well, you're get oh, am I really? Yeah, you better do your investigation and watch a live stream, Connors. You got 700 people. No, I will not stop, Connors. Are you detaining me? I am. I'm under arrest. For what? I'm not doing that. I am not making those phone calls. I am not making those phone calls. Guys, do not call. Turn around. Put your hands behind your back. I'm not resisting, guys. Do not I'm being resist. under arrest, guys. Do not call. Charlestown Police Department. I did not incite these phone calls. I said, do not call Charlestown Police Department. I said, if you have any questions or grievances, you can call this on your own. Good. I never told them. You hear this? Guys, do not call. I do not consent to any searches or seizures on my property. You're under arrest. So I do it. not consent to any searches or seizures on my property. Guys, do not call the Charlestown Police Department regarding my unlawful arrest and detainment. Stay right here. I come from a generation where we didn't have reproductive liberty. I've been involved in this issue my entire adult life. And Peter Welsh has always been on the front lines of women's rights. That's why. Did you personally copy that? Yes. 
Yes. Based on your uh, further investigation uh, up here in the shore, do you believe that, that uh, the defendant's actions continue to support uh, the charges that you, that you pressed? Yes. Okay. And the, the, he has two pending charges against him. What charges do you currently believe are valid? Disorderly conduct and obstructing, uh, obstruction of, of government administration. And you believe you have five to follow five to less them on both? Yes. All right. So after the defendant was bailed and released, uh, were you be did you become aware of a second video? Yes. Okay. And was that recorded at the same time? Or the same day, correct? Yes. And what specifically did you observe uh, during the second live stream video? Uh, Mr. Manchin was outside on the on the sidewalk, uh, kind of in front of the, the fire station, facing back and forth. And essentially, um, requesting. Just object. You're talking about post conduct. He was arrested for what happened in the station, not for something that happened after. Him. Is this post conduct? Or pre -conduct? It is post conduct, but it is given the phone continued to ring, is further incitement of that. Other charges that should have been brought. So, following uh, defendant's arrest and release on June 23rd, what, what happened with respect to the phone call? Uh, phone calls continued, uh, jamming our phone lines for approximately three days. Non-stop? Non-stop. When you say jamming, what do you mean? I mean that with that rollover going from line one through six, um, most of the day, most of those periods of time, we did get a, a break in the middle of the night. Uh, the phone still rang, but not like they did during the day where all six lines would be jammed. And that was three days? Correct. Are you still getting phone calls? Yes. And you still getting phone calls referencing the credit? Yes. Anyone? Are you personally aware of any emergency or 911 services that were interrupted? Uh, specifically, yes, too. Uh, and was that an interruption because of the uh, phone lines being jammed? Yes. Okay. And you have had uh, direct of those? Yes. Okay. And uh, 911 services? Uh, yes. So when the rollover to Claremont PD is utilized, uh, Claremont can pick a call, correct? Yes. And generally with the rollover, is there a potential for drop call? Yes. Uh, is there a potential increase in response time? Yes. And why is that? It's now being dispatched instead of directly to us. It's going to another agency that then has to get a hold of us and then relay the information. So the time it takes the original call, the time then we now get the information from Claremont it is the same. You know, it, it, it's that time frame basically making the call twice. So, does that make a big difference on an emergency call? Yes. As far as public safety? Yes. Do you think that's a rollover uh, generally is an adequate way to manage service to the public? No, it's not a good way to manage the do you think it increases the risk of public to those people who are seeking service? Yes. And were there other communications that you received as a result of this um, uh, YouTube activity? Yes, I've got emails and faxes. Request that uh, the exhibit, the full video, uh, be submitted. So you received uh, emails and faxes? Yes. And you didn't charge for any bad activity? No. Okay. And in your investigation, did you become aware of active bail conditions on the defendant? Yes, he was on bail conditions from FAU New Hampshire Police Department. Okay, did that cause you to make contact with the FAU PD? Yes. And what was your understanding based on FAU PD as far as the conduct of the defendant? 
he was arrested uh, for trespassing. And he was, on, he was on bail conditions at the time of our incident. Did they have the same experience within Aurora College? They did, yes. Did you view uh, the Claremont PD and the Evans uh, video? Yes. About the same type of activity uh, and encouragement from the defendant? Yes. Generally, you have you, you respect an individual's right to report in public? Yes. Okay. And is it your purpose to inform the defendant's right to report? No. Uh, and you didn't charge him with any crime relating to the emails or <coughs> other types of communications or other types of activities, correct? Correct. Okay. So if it's only the safety risk posed by um, the massive overload of phone calls, uh, which the defendant decided that you believe goes to the level of charging him? Yes. And you still believe uh, that uh, the defendant on that day uh, did obstruct government administration? I do. Yes. And do you still believe? Uh, that the charge of disorderly conduct uh, is also um, a, a valid and uh, sustainable charge. Yes. I know I'm sort of fine on this, but it was based on. I'll go over it again if you've gone over it, but pay attention. It was not here. Um, I'm just testifying <coughs> about how you uh, respected Mr. Manchin's First Amendment rights. Yes. So you agree that um, Mr. Manchin showing up with a camera in your department to live stream what you're doing, tape what you're doing, that's a legitimate purpose? Yes. Um, also agree that um, anyone viewing his videos, if they see something on the video they don't like about what you're doing as a police chief or as a police department, they have their own independent right you to call you to make a complaint. Sure, but not the manner that it was done. So they're not allowed to call you and say, hey, I have a complaint. Um, they are, right? They're, they're allowed to do that. They're allowed to call. Okay. Um, you watched the video? Yes. And I think uh, counsel for the state showed that there were some comments on the side. Correct. And I think she cited one or two comments where a commenter put the department's phone number? Yes. And if you watch the whole thing, and I'm guessing you've watched it several times right now. Yes. If you look at those comments, there are actually several people who do that throughout, right? Yes. Multiple times people are saying, here's the phone number for the department. Yes. All right. And so um, we don't know. There's no way to know if people call the department because you thought Mr. Manchin was telling them, as opposed to reading one of those comments. Watch the live stream, and that's what I took out of when he when he mentioned, "I'm going to need your help on this one." And then when he interacts with that's the, a uh, when he interacts with his viewers and thanks them for posting the phone number, I think uh, I'm 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 quite certain that it's it's him wanting them to call in and teach us a lesson. He's got other people on that live stream saying to call. Him. We don't know if. Any particular person responded to him versus a comment. No way to know. Uh, there isn't, but this it okay. also wouldn't have happened if he wasn't live streaming. There's a legitimate purpose to live stream. I'm not saying he sure. shouldn't have been there in the first place. I'm not saying what he did was illegal to go there and live stream. He gets to do that, right? Sure, yes. And his audience, they're his audience because they share similar views with him, correct? I, I, I assume yes. All right. And so he has no idea what they're watching the video. They're watching the video, and if they have similar views to him, they don't need any encouragement to call, right? They want to do that anyway. Was that a question? I'm sorry. Yes. If they have an antagonistic view of police officers or police departments, I'm sure you'd say Mr. Manchin does, um, they don't need a lot of encouragement. They're going to do it anyway. Um, 
at that exact date and time? No, because the reason why it was all concentrated at that same time is because it was live streamed by Mr. Manchin. What you're saying is these people knew that Mr. Manchin was engaging in a First Amendment protected activity, and they used that as a cue to engage in their own First Amendment protected activity. Yes, they all engaged okay, in the same. Thank you. Is that just the hats or is that baby shit? Okay. Um, I'm going to end the stream, and I will do an update later.